this is the advent of code day four challenge problem from from this past December. Uh, I'm going to show how we can easily solve this just right here in our editor using Vim. So a quick overview of the problem. We're given lines like this where there's two ranges of numbers. And for each line, um, our job is to figure out in how many, so in other words, in how many assignment pairs does one range fully contain the other. So what it means by fully contain, you can like, you can visualize it in this example here. Three to seven, that range is fully contained by two to eight. And similarly, uh, six to six is fully contained uh, within four, five, and six, so four to six. However, in this example, uh, neither of these ranges are contained by each other. So that's the problem we're trying to solve here. The strategy I'm going to take to solve this problem involves looking at the edges of each range and comparing them with the corresponding edge from the other range. So for example, if you look at 2 and 8 versus 3 and 7, I know that if I compare 3 to 2, well, 3 is greater than or equal to 2, uh, so I know that at least it's partially contained, but I also have to check the other end and I can see, okay, seven is less than or equal to eight. And so I know that this range is fully contained within this range. And that's one case. There's a second case, which is if this was, if this was swapped. So that's what this is down here. Six is shorter than four, five, and six, but you can use the same sort of logic. So I know that uh, you know, 6 is greater than or equal to 4, and I know that 6 is greater than or equal to 6, therefore this one is fully contained. And so it helps to think of each of these edges as A, B in the first range, and then C and D in the second range. Let's move into Vim and start working on this problem. So uh, the first thing I want to do is be able to work with each of these numbers uh, independently. So I, I want to be able to think of each, each of these numbers as like A, B, C, and D. So to do that, I'm going to use a, the substitute command, and I'm going to use capture groups to be able to um, deal with each number in each line individually. And so we'll start building that up here. So <clears throat> I'm going to start out with percent %s. Percent is a is a range. It's kind of like an alias for well, not an alias, but it's kind of a shortcut way to say that I want to apply this substitute to every single line in the file. And so to start out, slash d will grab a digit, but notice it's only grabbing one digit. Uh, I want to grab more than one, so I can do slash plus, and now I'm getting the first number on every single line. And if I, I could, let's just replace this with a under, well, with a space, I don't know, doesn't matter. Um, if I don't have the dash or the slash G at the end here, you can see you can see the difference that makes. So G will allow me to match digits across the whole line rather than just the very first one from the line. But anyways, so for the for the capture groups, I've shown this before in, in some of the old other videos, but we just wrap whatever you want to capture, just wrap it in a parenthesis. And you do need to escape parentheses unless you're in very magic mode. There we go. I'm capturing the first number. And then I know that it's always followed by a dash, so I can just write that in verbatim. And then second match group, uh, slash D, slash plus, close off the group, and then it's always followed by a comma. And then another match group, slash D, slash plus, and then another dash, and then the final match group. So lots of escapes going on. <laughs> lots of escaping happening. And so there, so hopefully, so we have four match groups. So hopefully if I do this, those should correspond to the you know appropriate A, B, C, and D, how we're kind of think of thinking about this problem. So now that we're capturing each number from the line, here's what we can do next. Normally when we're using the substitute command, we're mostly interested in just replacing with a value. So whatever I matched on, just replace it with a straight up value. But in some cases like this, you may, you may want to do something a bit more complicated or add a little bit of logic, which is what we want to do. And we were able to do that with um, the substitute command because they allow for replacing with an expression, which is what slash equal gives you. And so what we want to do is basically say, is A greater than or equal to C? 
and then is b less than or equal to d, that's one case, or um, is, is c greater than or equal to a, and is d less than or equal to b. And so if either of those are true, um, it's going to output basically a 1 or a 0. And so we'll be able to tell on each line, uh, was it a 1 or a 0, based on the result of this Boolean expression that we're replacing each line with. So let's write the expression. Since we're in expression land, um, I have to use sub sub match. So this is how we're going to be able to reference our variables or our match groups rather than the slash. So I wanted to check is a uh, greater than or equal to c. So c is three. So sub match three, and we can do double ampersand um, sub match or b is less than or equal to sub match um, d, I think. Yes, d. Um, so 4. So that's one case. But there's another case. So we can say or sub match c, so 3, is greater than or equal to sub match 1 and sub match Four is less than or equal to submatch two. You can see how substitute is has been giving us a real-time preview of the changes it's going to make as we've been typing this out. It looks like it's probably right. There's zeros, there's ones, but from since I've done this before, um, I can tell you that it's there's actually a slight problem with this, and it has to do with numbers versus strings. So submatch each of our submatch function i believe that's coming back with a string value and then we're doing this less than or equal to and greater than or equal to comparison but since they're strings that function works or that comparison works a little bit differently i haven't totally confirmed this but i'm pretty sure that's what's going on uh, so if we were to run this and then you know complete this problem we would actually end up with the the wrong result but to fix it um, we can wrap each of these submatches in the in a function called str uh, to nr, so a string to number. And so I'm just going to go through str to nr and replace each of these. Okay, so I've updated each of those submatch functions. So now I'm going to actually hit enter to run this. Did a thousand substitutions and we see you know we have zeros we have ones so what's the next step well since ones represent lines that the condition was true those are the only ones we want to keep so um, one way to do that is colon g it's for global and then we want to search for all the zeros and we want to delete those it got rid of 476 lines. So now we have, we can see there's 524 lines in the document. So let's just check, check the answer here, 524. So that's correct. So we could stop here since we know that there's this many ones in our document, or there's a, a couple other ways we could do this. For example, one way I could come here on this line and just say, enter the expression register and say, um, I want the current line since I'm at the bottom of the document, 524. Or, you know, we could do something similar where, you know, I enter the expression register again, and but this time I say uh, I want the number of lines from the, to the end of my document, which is also 524. Or we could select all these, um, do a join, do the same type of thing that we have been doing in other videos where we replace space with plus and then we clear this into our unnamed register and then go back into the expression register again and paste that in there to get the number. So either way that's how you can get the final value. So really that's it for this problem. It's just a big another big substitute command. <laughs> Uh, if you have another way that you can think of to solve this, let me know. I'd love to hear about it uh, using Vim. And I'll try to put in the comments some help doc references to things that were applicable in this video. So thank you for watching.